Lori here. I'm here to do kind of a new video series on my channel. I've been contemplating doing this for like a while, but since we are currently in quarantine and we have been home a lot more and I've been home a lot more, I wanted to share other than reading, what are some of the other things that have been occupying my time and just share some of the movies and actually I haven't watched a whole lot of movies, but like the TV shows that I've been watching and what has been really capturing my attention. Um, and I just wanted to dive into that. I've actually been playing some video games, which has been really exciting. And just sharing some things that I've been doing during this time that I don't normally get a chance to do. Or things that I have neglected. So, I'm going to break this down into TV shows that I've binged. TV shows that I am currently up to date on. And TV shows I have started binging. And any other things that I've been doing. So, I started this year, like this, this school year teaching wise very behind on all my TV shows because last year I did a production of Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory and it was my first year teaching so everything pretty much fell by the wayside actually around this time last year like in the end of April beginning of May I stopped doing just about anything I stopped reading I stopped watching TV because my show was pretty much all consuming so it's taken me about a year to catch up on everything and I just wanted to go over the TV shows that I actually was able to catch up on and now that I feel like I'm caught up on, which is really exciting. Um, so the first show that I was actually wound up to catch myself up on was actually This Is Us, which is a show that I love. I saw I started this show like four years ago and I know that it has like, I know people say that it's like just like a gut punch to like make you cry and it is, but I think the acting is phenomenal. I think the structure of the show is phenomenal. I think it's probably one of the most best written TV shows on TV because it really takes so many different elements and kind of creates them together. I love the cast of This Is Us. This new season was very interesting. You got to go to a lot more time time points in history. You got to see these characters in a bunch of different aspects. I thought that was so interesting and so cool. And I just love the cast. I love my I love like the entire cast of the show. So I was really happy to finally get caught up and I'm really excited to see where the next season goes because it left off a kind of a cliffhanger like it always does. But that was one show that I was super happy that I was able to get caught up on. Um, another show that I actually wound up being caught up on um, was The Good Doctor. Now this show actually ended for the season and I would always like go like three weeks, not watch, and then have to catch up. I was blown away by the season finale. I did not see that coming like at all. I'm really curious to see what's going to happen next season. But I actually really do like that show. I really like how it's putting autism in the forefront of a story. I think um, the guy who plays him, um, I can't think of his name right now, but that actor is so well done. Like, he's just a really, really good actor. And I sometimes struggle with when actors, when actors are playing characters that have disabilities that they don't have. But I actually think in this case, I think that... Um, he is a great actor and he really deserves like his props for that and I think he's great. Um, it basically follows this guy who, this this young man who has autism but he really wants to be a doctor and you kind of follow him through his life as he's going through his job and his per personal life and his social life and then you also get to see all the other doctors. I just think it's a really, really fun show and I really love all the medical stuff that they wind up talking about and discussing. So I'm really excited for next season when it comes back, and I cannot wait to see how they deal with the fallout. Um, I also um, wound up catching up, I think I'm a couple episodes behind now, but on Nancy Drew, which is the new show on The CW, I love shows that are a mix of mystery and paranormal, and I love Nancy Drew. I actually really want to read more of her books in the upcoming years because I like the author a lot and I like her but it's basically a modern day test on twist on Nancy Drew but this show is a lot more supernatural in elements and I'm loving it like I love the cast of characters I think it's so fun it's just like a fun new show to watch and one that I'm like equally obsessed with so I don't know how many more episodes we have this season but I think it's coming up onto like the season finale I really hope that we get that it gets renewed for a season two because I'm thoroughly enjoying it 
Um, sorry, I'm looking at my computer because I wrote a blog post for this as well. Um, I also started watching Katie Keene, which is the new Lucy Hale show that is like a spinoff of Riverdale. I have not seen Riverdale, but I don't think you really have to just because one of the characters just comes from there. But I'm really liking it. I've always loved Lucy Hale as an actress. I think it's so fun. And this one is just more set in the fashion industry. I like her friends. And I, I'm just really liking it. I, I think I'm a couple episodes behind at this point. Um, but I'm really liking it and I can't wait to catch, catch up. Um, I'm really hoping it gets renewed. Her other show got canceled, so I'm really hoping she has better luck with this show. And then I undertook a massive undertaking, and that was to catch up on the Arrowverse. I think I started 2020, like, so far behind. I think at that point I was only watching The Flash, but I made a concentrated effort towards the end of 2019 and the beginning of 2020 to catch myself up. So now I'm fully caught up on all of the shows except for Green Arrow, which has ended, and Black Lantern. Um, all the other shows I'm caught up on, and I'm loving that world building. I think my favorite show right now is probably still The Flash, but, oh, and not Legends of Tomorrow. I still have to watch the newest season of Legends of Tomorrow. Actually, two seasons. I'm still two seasons behind on that. Um, but that's going to be another show that I'm just going to add to my Netflix queue, hopefully soon. Um, but I'm, I think, I think Bat, Batwoman and The Flash are probably some of my favorites. I also really like, um... I, I, I really love them all. I love The Flash. I love Supergirl. I love Batwoman. I, I really am liking them. So I'm happy that I'm able to, I was able to catch myself up because that's a quite a big undertaking because there's so many shows that are kind of interconnected and you have to watch them all. I also love what they did with the crisis event, how that twist made the world easier to have crossovers. I'll say that. I don't want to spoil it if you haven't seen it. But I was super happy about that. And I actually might spend next weekend catching up on the CW shows that I have not caught up on. Because I fell down a very dangerous hole for my new obsession. And we'll talk about that later. Um, and then I was also able to catch up on two shows um, that finished. Which was Good Trouble, which stars Maya Mitchell and Sierra Ramirez. Which is the spinoff of The Fosters that I'm loving. Also, fun fact, Shari Sam, who was in that show, is also in Lock and Key that I am thoroughly like as well which I'll talk about that in a little bit um but I'm really happy that I finally caught up it's a very different type of show than the Fosters but it does deal with like a lot of hard-hitting contemporary issues like gun violence racism sexism um it just does deals with a lot of interesting topics and I love those two actors so much so anything I could do to support them I will and I'm happy to report I was able to finish the bold type which I think they're on season three now but I really again liked the like this season um, of the bold type and I'm really excited to see where season four goes because they're going to be dealing with a lot harder topics in that season and I'm super excited but those are all the shows that I feel like I'm caught up on or I completed or I watched I'm sure there's a couple that I'm missing but those are the ones that I really focused on during this quarantine time to catch myself up now we're going to talk about the stuff that I wound up binge watching and by binge watching I mean that I watch it pretty much back to back to back um, I've had a lot of time recently, so this is going to be a shorter list now, but it will definitely get longer as this quarantine goes on. Hopefully not too much longer, but we just don't know. The first show that I wound up binge watching, I actually started doing this at the tail end of when I was still like working from like commuting back and forth, but it's Lock and Key, which is the new Netflix show, which is based on a graphic novel, I think, or a novel. And I'm really liking it. It has major Stranger Things vibes. Like, basically, these this this young family, their father is killed, like, shot and killed, like, violently. And you find that out in, like, the first, like, ten minutes. So I'm not really spoiling anything. And they wind up moving back to his old childhood home. And some mysterious things start happening. And there's some keys that are magical. And the kids are very, very involved. It definitely has some massive Stranger Things vibe. But I really liked it. I thought it was so well done. I know we're definitely getting a season two. Um, but I really love the kids in that. It reminds me a lot of the kids in Stranger Things. Like, they're very much the focus of that show. And also Shari Sam from The Fosters in the, is in that. And there's a couple of other actors, like... There's Griffin Gluck, who was in Red Band Society. Sherry Sam is in it. There's a couple of other actors that I know from, like, other things, but really excited for it. The ending was really, really shocking, and I cannot wait to see what they're going to do with season two. So, thor thoroughly enjoyed it. If you like Stranger Things or, like, a creepy show like that, I would actually recommend it. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I was able to finish Lock and Key very early into quarantine, like, very early into quarantine. Um... 
But then I started watching... Oh, I... This Is Us took a lot of time. I did talk about This Is Us. I really did binge watch This Is Us. I watched it pretty much back to back to back. But This Is Us took me at least like two weeks to complete because I was so far behind. I was like a full season behind of This Is Us and I pretty much binge watched the whole season in like three weeks. So that was a very long binging time but it is in both categories because technically I'm just caught up on the season that happened this year but I did watch it back to back to back and I was actually like I had not even seen that I think I saw the first episode of um this season back in like September and then everything else I watched you know so that took a long time but it was again as I said previously very very well done very excited for the next season to hopefully come out hopefully in the fall we will see depending on when actors and everyone can head back to work um, but the next thing that I wound up binge watching was season eight of Royal Pains. I had binge watched Royal Pains a couple of years ago, like all the seasons. And I just forgot. I think at that point, it hadn't gone on Netflix yet. I think if the season had just happened. So I watched the last eight episodes of Royal Pains. And that was just fun. I really like those characters. I love those actors. And it's just, it's, it's like a medical drama as well. But it's like what a little bit of a twist. This former ER doctor wound up getting a job as a con concierge medical practice in the Hamptons. And it follows them over eight years. I really like that show. I really want to look up what those actors are doing. I know that one of the actors is very involved in the Hallmark environment now, um, but I really do like them as actors, so I'm curious to see where they wound up. Um, and then the next show that I wound up binge watching was Gifted Season 2. I had watched Gifted Season 1 when it came out, and I was really invested in that show. Like, I thought the, I have, it has some of my favorite actors in that show. It has Amy Acker from Angel. It has, um, Tyler Byrne from The Lion Game, who I love. It has, like, a bunch of actors that, oh, and then it has, um, I can't remember her name, but she was in once Upon a Time as Mulan. So there's a lot of actors that I just really enjoyed. And I just started binge watching that because it was like in my Hulu account that I like, you have not watched this. So I love that show like so much. Like I binge watch it in like a week. I thought it was so good. I'm so happy, so sad that it got canceled because I would have loved to see what happened next. I thought it tackled a lot of interesting issues of like, of course it's mutant rights, but like, you know, what's happening in our society you know, racism, you know, and all that other stuff. I just loved it. I love the use of magical powers. I love the use of witchcraft or like powers. I loved it. And that is what caused my invisible downfall into my next obsession, which I'll talk about in a little bit, but really good. Would highly recommend. It's only two season seasons. It is on Hulu. And I just wish we had more shows like that. So I've been on the hunt for more shows like that, which is why I've been watching some other things that I was definitely not planning. Um, Another thing that I wound up binge watching was Fuller House Season 5 Part A. Um, I just like that show. I, it's just fun. Like, it's just a fun show for me. I love the actors. It's funny. I, I've been watching so many hard-hitting shows recently. That show's just fun, and I'm really excited to see how it ends. Um, but it ended off on kind of a fun cliffhanger, so I'm curious to see when we're going to get the second half of it. But it was thoroughly enjoyable. And again, I just needed something light and fluffy, and I watched that in like a weekend because it was like 10 episodes. Uh, this next row definitely made me laugh, um, and, it, and it always does. Um, it's Nailed It Season 4, which is when these not-so-great bakers go on a competition to try to recreate cake masterpieces, and it is hysterical. I've watched all four seasons, and it's just funny. It just makes me laugh. I love seeing their attempts at these creations and I just love the two hosts. I love Nicole. She's so funny and it's just it's really really enjoyable. So I binge watched that like last weekend and it was a fun time. Um, and yeah so those are all the things that I have binge watched and completed recently and now we're going to get into the stuff that I'm in the middle of binge watching. So after Gifted, I was really looking for something that was kind of along the same lines, like with like a magic school or with like powers. And I knew that someone had said Legacies, which is a spinoff of the Vampire Diaries and the originals, which I have not seen, has those elements. I said, you know what? Let me give it a try. And I wound up watching the first two episodes and boy, was I hooked. Hook, line, and sinker. I love this show. I think it's such a show that's made for me. I love witchcraft. I've been trying to find a show like that 
kind of focus on what like what Willow did and Buffy. I've always been looking for that. Like since like I started, since Buffy's been over, I've been looking for a show that's kind of dealt with that. Little did I know, Vampire Diaries does have witches, which I was unaware of at the time. But I really wound up liking that. I think I'm like 11 episodes in and I'm loving it. It has some of my favorite tropes, like YA trope books, like YA book tropes in it. Love the cast of characters. I have yet to decide if I'm going to binge watch Originals and Vampire Diaries because that's a really big time commitment. And there are some other shows that I'm a little bit more interested in, but it might happen. Um, I'm also in the middle of binge watching When Calls the Heart, which is the Hallmark original show that sets place in like the 17 or 1800s. It does star Lori Laughlin, but it also stars a lot, a lot of other actors. And I started it a couple years ago and I forgot that it's now it's over, I think, at this point. Or maybe not over, but it's changed its like focus, I think, a little bit. But again, I've been reading a lot of more historical fiction and that book kind of just TV show kind of fell on my radar. So that's one that I'm also in the middle of rewatching or watching, binge watching. But I will admit Legacies is kind of my focus. And also going along with my rewatchable podcast, I'm in the middle of a pitch rewatch, which I have never seen pitch. What rewatchable does is it takes a cult classic show and kind of rewatches it with super fans and newbies. And I am a newbie for pitch, but I'm also a super fan for Agent Carter. Again, last year I kind of fell off the bandwagon and did not watch or listen to anything. And that was when they did Agent Carter. So I do need to kind of need to catch up on those two shows. So I'm hoping to actually catch up because I'm actually two weeks behind on both shows at this point. So I'm going to hopefully watch those four episodes today and then move back to Legacies. That's my plan anyway. And I did start, watch, wa start watching Letter to the King, which is a Netflix show. I only watched the first episode. I liked it. I didn't love it. But eventually I will probably keep watching because I was intrigued enough to keep watching. Um, but yeah, those are the things that I'm currently in the middle of binge watching. The last two things I'm going to talk about in this video is video games. Now, I do not play a whole lot of video games. I'm going to be a little bit honest. I do have a Switch. I never used it until quarantine started. And then I went on like a buying spree. I bought all the Spyro games on my Switch. I bought Animal Crossing, which everyone is obsessed with. I bought Luigi's Mansion. I bought a bunch of other games that I bought my Harry Potter games. So I've actually been playing mostly right now. I've been playing Animal Crossing and Spyro a lot. Um, Animal Crossing is just super fun. I try to log in every single day. This week has did not happen. I'm going to try to at least log in today and kind of get better next week. But I had to do a lot of prep filming for May and I just ran out of time. And it was a gorgeous day outside yesterday. So that's, that's the bad thing with me when it gets really nice. I'm not in my house a lot. Now I'm forced to be in my house a little bit more. Um, but I do hope to still keep playing because I am really having a lot of fun. So let me know what are some of the things that have been capturing your attention. I've been definitely going on a lot more bike ride, rides, walks, definitely venturing outside my house, keeping a safe distance, of course, but trying to engage in a little bit more exercise, working out every single day, trying to keep a sense of a routine, which is really easy during the week because I work a nine to three job. So I do have like a structure like that. Um, but yeah, let me know what are some of the things that have been occupying your space your mental space, things that you have been doing that you haven't done before or haven't been watching before. And I'll talk to you in May for another list. Bye, guys. Let me know in the comments if you like this feature. I think I'm going to keep doing it more as like a record for myself, like which is what this whole channel is basically for. But if you do like this or want me to do any other fandom-focused videos, just let me know and I'll be sure to add them to the TV. I'll be sure to add them to my filming queue. Bye, guys.